Imagine two students faced with the same challenging math problem. They're both average students doing well enough, but one dives in confidently, ready to tackle it head on. The other stares at the problem, feels overwhelmed and unsure of where to start. What's the difference between these two students? Maybe the issue lies in their self-efficacy and self-regulation. The concept of self-efficacy and self-regulation was introduced by Albert Bandura, one of the most influential psychologists of our time. You might have heard of Bandura's social cognitive theory, and I have another video explaining that idea. But in this video, let's start with self-efficacy. Self-efficacy is essentially the belief in one's own abilities to succeed in specific situations or accomplish a task. It's not just about having the skills, but believing that you can use those skills effectively. Bandura describes self-efficacy as the belief in one's capabilities to organize and execute the course of action required to manage prospective situations. Think of self-efficacy as the driving force behind our actions. It's what makes a student raise their hand in class, an athlete push through the final lap, or a musician perform in front of a crowd. This belief in our capabilities influences every aspect of our lives from the goals we set to the challenges we take on. High self-efficacy can lead to greater motivation, resilience, and success. On the other side, lower self-efficacy can result in avoidance of challenges, decreased effort, and even giving up. As Bendura points out, people's beliefs in their efficacy influence the choices they make, their aspirations, the effort they mobilize, their perseverance in the face of difficulties, their resilience to adversity, and their vulnerability to stress and depression. So how can we help students, teachers, and parents build and strengthen self-efficacy? By understanding its power and implementing strategies that foster a positive belief in one's abilities, we can create an environment where everyone thrives. One of the main ways to reinforce self-efficacy is through self-regulation. Imagine a student has a big science project due in two weeks. At first, the student feels overwhelmed by the amount of work required. Instead of procrastinating or panicking, they decide to take control of the situation using self-regulation. Instead of waiting until the last minute, they break the project into smaller tasks, create a timeline, and set specific goals for each day. They monitor progress, adjust project plans when necessary, and self-reward with short breaks after completing each task. This student is using self-regulation. Self-regulation involves controlling one's behavior, emotions, and thoughts in the pursuit of long-term goals. Bandura states that self-regulation lies at the very heart of causal processes. It operates through three principal sub-functions, self-monitoring, judgmental processes, and self-reactive influences. Self-monitoring involves observing one's own behavior. Judgmental processes involves comparing one's behavior against personal standards and environmental norms. And lastly, self-reactive influences involves responding to one's behavior with self-rewards or self-punishments. For students, developing self-regulation skills is key to academic success. It helps them stay focused, manage their time effectively, and stay motivated even when tasks are difficult. Let's break down each sub-function with examples. Self-monitoring involves observing and tracking one's own behaviors and progress. For example, a student might keep a study log to track how much time they spend on each subject. This awareness can help them identify patterns and make adjustments to improve their study habits. As Bendura noted, by monitoring their own performances, students can gain the understanding necessary to bring about desired outcomes. According to Bandura, judgmental processes involve comparing one's performance with a set of standards and interpreting the quality of one's actions. A student might compare their project work against a rubric provided by the teacher to see if they meet the expected standards. This helps in setting benchmarks and striving for continuous improvement. A proficiency scale rubric, which typically ranges from emerging to extending, allows students to self-assess their progress and understand where they fall on the continuum of mastery. By identifying specific areas for growth, students can focus their efforts on improving their skills and achieving higher levels of proficiency. Self-reactive influences involve responding to one's performance with self-rewards or self-punishments. For example, a student might reward themselves with a short break after completing a set of math problems or a particularly challenging assignment. 
This helps maintain motivation and reinforce positive behaviors. Bandura emphasizes that self-reinforcement serves as a vital source for motivation that sustains task engagement over time. By integrating these self-regulation strategies, students can better manage their learning processes and achieve their long-term goals. Self-regulation skills enable students to stay organized, motivated, and focused even when they encounter difficulties. Now here are some practical tips to enhance self-efficacy and self-regulation. First, set achievable goals. Help students set realistic and achievable goals to build their confidence. Start with small, manageable tasks that can be completed within a short time frame. For example, instead of aiming to finish an entire book in one week, encourage students to read one chapter a day. Gradually increase the difficulty of the goals as they become more confident in their abilities. This approach helps students experience success and develop a sense of accomplishment, which is crucial for sustaining motivation. Second, provide positive feedback. Encourage students by highlighting their strengths and improvements. Be specific in your feedback, pointing out exactly what they did well and how to contribute it to their success. For instance, you might say, I noticed you stayed focused and completed all your math problems without getting distracted. Great job. This kind of feedback not only reinforces positive behaviors, but also helps students understand what strategies are effective, thereby boosting their self-regulatory skills. Third, Model effective strategies. Demonstrate self-regulation techniques like time management and goal setting. Show students how to break tasks into smaller steps, prioritize activities, and allocate time for each task. For example, you can create a daily schedule together, assigning specific time slots for studying, breaks, and extracurricular activities. By seeing these strategies in action, students can learn how to apply them in their own lives enhancing their ability to manage their time and task effectively. Lastly, encourage self-reflection. Teach students to reflect on their own learning and behavior to identify areas for self-improvement. Prompt them to think about what strategies worked well and what could be improved. For example, after a study session, ask questions like, what did you find easy? What was challenging? How can you approach the challenging parts differently next time? Encouraging regular self-reflection can help students develop a deeper understanding of their strengths and areas for growth, promoting continuous improvement and self-awareness. By understanding and applying Bandura's concepts of self-efficacy and self-regulation, teachers and parents can better support their students' educational journeys, and students can develop the skills they need to succeed not only in school but in life. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more educational content. And as always, feel free to leave your questions and comments below. See you next time.